Lucky. I am live. I'm doing this live in my free Facebook group, Women Creating Healthy Lives. So if you're watching on YouTube, oh my look at the difference in my shoulder height. Like, one's so much lower. That's not good. I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, Women Creating Healthy Lives. That is my free Facebook group. That is all, that's there all the time. That's where I do all the amazing training. Sometimes I do some free challenges. I post what I'm eating. I post recipes sometimes and I do spontaneous videos. I talk a lot about mindset and I post things about that. So it's a community for women over 40. So come join us if you are not part of that yet. So if you're watching from YouTube, hello YouTube. Thank you so much for your support. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> And feel free to comment, uh, leave me a YouTube comment when, if you're watching this on YouTube or a question, and I will definitely get back to you because I will be checking in on that too. Okay. I love doing these and I'm really excited to be here. I'm just gonna, my dog, you might hear noises in the background because my dog Bailey goes a little crazy when I ignore him. And <laughs> While I'm on a live stream, he uh, tends to get a little crazy. Hey, Mona. Hi, Danielle. I see a couple of people have joined me. Great. I'm just going to post that I am live. Yeah, he's going a little crazy. All right. It's like he doesn't know what to do with himself, right? Okay. Oopsie. Okay, I always got to refresh on my Facebook group too. I mean, if I'm looking down, I'm looking on my phone because that is where I can see you guys commenting and posting because I will be doing some slides um, here. So we are going to have some slides for this video. So it's more like a webinar presentation. If you haven't attended one of these before, get a pad, get a paper and pen because you will want to. Now the replay will be up in this group. I'm not, I think I might take it down because I think I might package these up and have them as like a free little thing sometime or I may keep it in the group. I am not sure, okay? So let's talk about this. This is the three reasons for belly fat in midlife, what you can do naturally to bring your body back into better balance and release it. The thing that I work with, so I'm very much on working with doing this naturally. I don't um, recommend synthetic hormones. Uh, we might talk a little bit about that today. I don't recommend, um, why basically synthetic hormones, what I really don't recommend because they can cause other problems. Um, they can be linked because it's a bad estrogen. And so they can be linked with breast cancer and other cancers and also weight gain, bloating and water retention and actually mood stuff, like not feeling so good. And when you try to get off the synthetic hormones, you will be thrown into more of a hormone mess because then your body goes completely wacko and way out of balance. And it's crazy to get off of them. You have to wean yourself off them slowly. Okay, so that is something. But basically I work with food, stress reduction and mindset. And that's how I help people bring their bodies back into better balance because we are really meant to... Um, this is a phase of life that is natural. I mean, the way we live our lives now is a little crazy. So we're under more stress. We're working more. We're doing more. There's more envi environmental toxins. There's more things being thrown at us and to us. And women do more now and don't rest and relax like they used to. So there's a definite reasons why women tend to be more out of balance, gaining more and more weight and having these crazy symptoms during this phase of life because their body really is supposed to be able to handle this and go through this phase a lot with a lot less symptoms and stress, okay? And not as much fatigue, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm going to start sharing the video. I mean, the slides that I have. I have part of my glass, maybe I can do this. All right, here we are. <laughs> all right so if you're new to me welcome so happy to have you here i have been helping women through the midlife phase and beyond for quite a few years and before that i have been a personal trainer a yoga instructor a raw food chef i helped open up a vegan raw food restaurant and helped them do the recipes with another girl uh, we did the recipes we opened it up we or you know 
kind of set everything together with um, some other people. And then I worked as their head chef for two years. And I also did raw food classes. And if you're not sure what raw food is, it's, it's a way of preparing certain foods to keep the live enzymes and nutrients in the food. But there's also, you can make like these different raw cheeses and amazing nut milks, right? And things like that. So it's really incredible. You might want to check it out. I really like to say that I empower women to take charge of your health through body, mind, and soul, because we're, we're holistic. It's not just one thing. It re really requires, this midlife phase really requires you to make changes on all levels, body, mind, and soul. If you don't, you're going to feel out of balance in some area, right? So there's some women that may think they're eating all the right things, but then they feel empty inside and they feel like, why do I feel so stuck? Why do I feel like I, is this all to life? Why, why am I a little depressed? Why am I feeling anxious, right? All of those things too. So this is not just about the belly, and the weight in midlife, I'm telling you, that is just one of the symptoms, but that's, we're kind of going to talk about that today. I've studied nutrition and hormones specific to this phase of life. Uh, and then, it, like I said, I know now the exercises that, because what you used to eat doesn't work anymore. And the way you used to exercise doesn't work anymore. That all needs to change, but it doesn't have to be in a really hard way. And I think that's why women get stuck at this phase because there's so much conflicting information out there. You're like, I don't know who to believe or what to believe. There's so much out there and it's overcomplicated. And so one thing when women come into my programs, they're like, oh, that's it. The food is really that easy. I'm like, yeah, but if you don't know, you don't know. And we're going to be talking about the food um, on Friday. So the section of the, the next video is going to be on the food. And then the third video on Sunday is going to be on stress. And if you think you don't need to watch that one, I'm going to tell you right now, stress will trump everything. You can eat all the right foods. You can be exercising right. But if you're consistently under stress, if your body is in stress response, you will not lose the weight. So you need to learn a lot more about how the body's handling stress and why it can't handle it as well as possible. And that is on Sunday. So make sure you come around for that. This is where you can find me. My website that's old. It's very old, people. I just post things on my programs in there. Uh, I just haven't updated it. That's a huge endeavor. But I hang out with women creating healthy lives. That's where I hang out all the time, right? And then I post my YouTube videos. Instagram now, Diana Marchand 50. I have to put the Instagram thing on there. So let's talk about where you are now. It all starts with, you guys know, you're in here, you're dealing with midlife changes. And that's where you are now. Your body's changing. What used to work doesn't work anymore. So what does? And in these three days, that's what we're going to talk about. <clears throat> so do you know what phase of life you're in? Are you in perimenopause, menopause, or postmenopause? If anybody knows, comment below. So today we're talking about the hormones, definitely on the hormones aspect of it. So what can cause the weight gain? Before we move on to, there's a lot of information on hormones and believe me, you don't need to know the technical stuff, but it really helps to understand it, to see it, to have the knowledge of it. The hormones, for one thing, and we all know that, and everybody thinks that's the only place. And so they go to the doctors and get, by, and get um, hormones, hormone replacement therapy, thinking that's going to solve everything. <laughs> no. And I can tell you again, you'll just gain weight. You will be bloated and you'll have a lot of water retention. And like I said, you'll get more of the emotional symptoms. So that's not the answer. <laughs> um, drinking and eating the wrong things and not enough of the right things. Absolutely, almost 100%. The food and drink and the stress reduction are the two most important things, uh, completely the most important things. Those are the things that bring your body back into better balance. That's what does it. Um, toxins cause weight gain. And we're going to find more about that. And that is what you put on your body, what you put in your body and what you're breathing in from the air. Okay. Uh, focusing on weight gain on the weight and nothing else. So that's what I talked about. You'll end up continually gaining weight and having this belly fat for a long time in this phase of life. If all you focus on is weight you do everything to try to just lose the weight, but you're not working on eating, you know, the right foods, making sure you're doing the right thing for this phase of life. There can be a lot of diets out there. A lot of people can be telling you that guaranteed their way is going to work for you, but if they are not 
taking into consideration your age, like what's going on in your body, then it's probably not going to work. You are different than you were in your 20s and 30s and even early 40s, right? That is just a fact. Stress, like I said, huge one, number one, pretty much. Stress will trump everything in midlife. You know, when you're younger, some people are like, well, I would, when I was under consistent stress when I was younger, I'd lose weight because I wouldn't need that. That won't happen now. <laughs> no, most likely you will gain weight even if you don't eat much in midlife. You will gain it, okay? So you don't want to calorie restrict either. Big one. Um, not putting yourself as a priority. If you continually say to yourself, I don't have time to. I don't have time to eat healthy. It's too expensive to buy healthy foods. Um, I don't understand. I, um, I have too many pe people to take care of. My job is too crazy, too busy, too stressful. There's nothing I can do. That's where the mindset comes in. Saying those things will keep you exactly where you are. And it will actually, you will get worse. Because the more you resist taking care of yourself and not do some of these right things, the worse things will get. You're not in your 20s anymore. You are not in your 30s anymore. You know, it's just, that's just the way it is. Um, and exercising the wrong way for this phase of life you are in. Um, doing nothing but cardio, thinking that going for long walks, going like crazy on the treadmill, running for an hour is going to work. No, not in this phase of life. Afraid that's not going to work. Excessive boot camps, CrossFit. Tons of stuff like that probably won't work, especially if you're, your hormones are fluctuating a lot and you experience more fatigue and you haven't been sleeping well. Then those are things that are going to backfire on you. You will actually gain more weight exercising like crazy during this phase of life. So pretty intense and it's pretty crazy. That's why knowing the right things to do, I'm just checking my comments makes a huge difference in this phase of life. And again, I cannot stress it enough, right? Okay, I'm having a hard time seeing my comments. Oh, there we go. Postmenopause, perimenopause, evil necessity. <laughs> let's see, I'm in peri. Great. So yeah, let's look at what these things are. Oh, I think I may, what can you do? There we go, midlife weight. So your fat cells are expanding. Uh, and that's crazy. They actually get bigger. They do shrink eventually, but they do get bigger in this phase of life. Isn't that amazing? Um, your metabolism is decreasing. Insulin resistance can cause it. We're going to talk more about that. Consistent stress, uh, thyroid problems, sedentary life. Most people have more of a sedentary life at this phase. Not eating, the, again, we're kind of repeating, not eating the right foods. Decre uh, your ovaries are decreasing the production of estrogen um, and your fat cells produce Estrogen, especially if adrenal glands cannot. So your body will put on fat so that your body can produce more hormones better. By the age of 35, you lose a half a pound of muscle each year and you gain about one and a half pounds of fat. That is if you do not strength train. So if you're not strength training from the age of 35 each year, on average, some people put on way more, uh, you will lose a half a pound of muscle mass and you will gain one and a half pounds of fat. And that's only for a year. So most people gain more than that in a year, right? That's just the minimum. So perimenopause is when you still have your period. That is when you have the most fluctuations like ups and downs and symptoms and emotional issues and anxiety and weight gain, all that perimenopause. Menopause is when you haven't had your period for one full year. Then you can say you're in menopause. And then basically, you're in postmenopause. <laughs> we call this whole thing menopause, but menopause is the shortest section of this. Your perimenopause, then your menopause, bang, then your postmenopause. So that's how fast things go. That is the correct terminology. Okay, continue to comment, you guys, if you have things, if you have things to say or any um, situations you're going through. Now I'm going to go into the hormones, okay? We're gonna discuss the hormones um, and how they affect the belly fat. And like I said, you don't need to memorize or anything this, you just need to see, 
oh my God, this is what's going on in my body. And you will see why certain foods and certain things, types of exercise and why stress causes more belly fat and the inability to lose it. You will find that out when I go through these hormones. Okay. When I go on, when I'm going through the hormones. So progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone are the hormones that they really measure during this phase of life. But we're going to talk about hormones that your doctor and other people do not measure that actually make more of a difference, believe it or not, pretty much. Well, the hormones we're going to talk about in a few minutes cause these ones to be even more out of balance. And that's what people don't talk about. Okay, so this is really important stuff coming up. So we always, progesterone is your first hormone that starts to decrease in perimenopause. Progesterone is the hormone that helps with pregnancy. So if someone is having a hard time getting pregnant and they're in their late 30s or 35, they could need, and if you are going to do progesterone, make sure it's bio-identical progesterone. Do not get synthetic. Your regular MD, the regular doctors do not learn about hormones and they do not learn about nutrition. So they cannot give you any real great super advice about what's going on with your hormones or how to solve it nutritionally, right? They can't, they don't learn it. All they know is what the drug companies tell them to. Here's a pill. It's usually synthetic estrogen of all things. Give the women this pill or an antidepressant. And this will help cover up that symptom. And it will also help them not feel as anxious or depressed. Terrible, really bad, really bad, terrible. Um, but they actually screw your body up. So let's just get past that. Uh, so progesterone, oh no, sorry guys. Progesterone, you can see some of the symptoms. Uh, and then with low progesterone. So when we our progesterone starts, to, we have estrogen and progesterone, and then progesterone starts to decrease. So what happens then is like your estrogen is a bit higher. So because there's this gap, you have symptoms. Now, if your doctor gives you estrogen, which is the synthetic hormone they usually give you, it's just going to make more of a gap. Your symptoms are going to be worse. You're going to feel worse. Right? You may not have hot flashes or night sweats anymore, but oh my God, your body's just becoming even more out of balance, right? And um, so we really need to watch about hormones that the doctors give you. And it's, it's I don't even want to go, they, they don't test it properly and they cannot control the doses properly. So we'll talk about it another day, but Bioidentical hormones are better for their natural. They're milder though. You're not going to notice a huge difference. You're not going to go, oh my God, I feel fantastic the next day. No, it's going to take a while for your body to adjust and they're creams. And so you adjust how much you put on. And it's a little bit of a, I took them for a year and a half to two years. Loved them, did fantastic for me, but they're not perfect. It's like taking um, a supplement compared to a Tylenol. You know what I mean? Um, so, but that's the way you want to go if you want to, but I can tell you right now that you can also sup, um, herbal supplement formulations, eating the right types of foods, exercising or not exercising the right way, sleep, rest, relaxation, taking care of yourself, stress reduction, or all of that is really what we're meant to do to bring our body back into better balance. But I did also take bioidentical hormones. I took progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone, all three of them. Um, and you need to you need to go to like a naturopathic doctor or a, like some sort of natural practitioner who deals with bioidentical hormones and they can help you. OK, if you have any more questions about those, just message me or post in the group because that's another whole topic. Now, testosterone. So if people are experiencing lack of sex drive, that's testosterone. And also. Um, as we age more and more, lack of muscle, like we continually lose muscle, it's harder and harder to gain muscle, even when you're working out because of the lack of testosterone. So that is a big one for all of this too. But I don't, don't go out and just buy testosterone on Amazon. Oh my God, don't do that. Because you really got to know where you are, what your levels are. Here we go. Cortisol and insulin, two of the most important hormones. These two 
have everything to do with belly fat, everything to do with belly fat. If you didn't have problems with cortisol or and you did not have problems with insulin, you probably wouldn't have a big problem with your weight. Unless you're eating really bad foods, <laughs> which is often the case, but it would make a huge difference, such a huge difference. So when I went into perimenopause, I changed what I ate, but I also changed my life. When my cortisol and insulin problems did, were gone, I lost the weight. I lost the weight. And this is what women do not tend to deal with is cortisol and insulin. They will deal with certain things, but not these two things. And what happens is they won't gain, the, they won't lose the weight. Um, and because they can also lead to thyroid problems. Okay. So these can lead to thyroid problems. And once you have a thyroid problem, that is very, very tricky. And we'll learn more about that on the stress, which is on uh, Sunday. Okay, we will learn more about adrenal fatigue, feeling when you're feeling tired, really low on energy, can't seem to get, aren't sleeping well, all of that. Make sure you watch Sunday on the stress. We will talk in depth about that, which has to do with cortisol. Okay, um, so you can check these out too, right? Low cortisol, high cortisol, and then insulin resistance, of course, comes from sugar, but our body metabolizes certain foods differently in midlife. So the certain foods in midlife, that foods that we used to eat, healthy foods, when we were younger, actually now spike our blood sugar levels and can lead to insulin problems. Therefore, fat, gain fat, gain fat, gain fat, can't lose fat. It's pretty brutal. Eve, you know, and just a quick example, we're going to talk more on the food on Friday, but a quick example would be cooked oatmeal and bananas and grapes. They are seen basically like pure sugar to your body. And when you eat pure sugar, it goes to fat. It's not used for fuel. Um, so in short, that's kind of what's going on in this phase of life. So these two hormones, and I'm going to talk a little more about them, an estrogen. So let's talk a little bit about the estrogen. Another reason why you could have belly fat and problems is high estrogen. Like I said, progesterone starts to decrease. All of a sudden your estrogen seems to be at a higher level. Then you're also consuming foods that have like fake estrogens in them, which keeps bumping up your estrogen level. When you have grain fed, hormone injected, super bug infected conventional meat, huge reason why women have belly fat. Also dairy. Dairy products where the cows are injected with a whole bunch of stuff that we, you eat, you consume that dairy, cheese, milk, creams, whatever. You eat this type of meat, it goes right into you and it screws up the hormonal balance of your body. These things have a lot of growth hormones too. So when you give the animals growth hormones, you don't think you're eating that food and getting those growth hormones too. You're crazy, right? And look at all the fast food, look at all the high consumption of meat, look at in the last 50 years how um, this industry has changed so much. And people have become more obese, more obese, more obese, right? So we really have to, right? Conventional meat, that means you buy it at a grocery store. It's not organic, it's not grass fed. It still has, it could have the hormones in them and, and they're injected with whatever they have to keep the livestock, as they say, healthy because the livestock are kept in very unhealthy environments, right? Um, can cause bloating and constipation, raises estrogen levels. And we've got to remember cancer. There's so many cancers that are caused by high, bad estrogen levels. So the bad estrogen, there's three kinds of estrogen. And when we're talking about plastics that give off a fake stuff, um, these bad estrogens are put in, are more in the body makeup. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of things. You are getting toxins and sometimes they're called xenoestrogens. So X-E-N-O estrogens, xenoestrogens. So you can Google that. And they go into your body. And so what they do is they raise the estrogen levels, but it's a bad estrogen. So you continually with worse symptoms, worse system, worse, worse symptoms, belly fat, belly fat. Um, breast cancers, a whole bunch of things. It's really, it's really a mess, right?
Is there any comments or questions about this specific stuff? And I know it can seem overwhelming and like, oh my God, can I not eat it? <laughs> You're going to eat meat. And believe lots of my clients eat meat. I do not say don't eat meat. I just cannot digest it that well myself. But grass-fed, local, organic, whatever. Go to your farmer's markets. If you have a local, really good butcher shop where you know the farmers, you know what's in it, you can ask questions, all of that type of thing. And you will need, you will have less meat too because it'll taste better. It, you'll notice that it'll fill you up better and all of those things. So it doesn't mean you don't eat it. And wild meat is great. It just means you want to eat more of the good stuff. Okay, definitely. Same with eggs. Estrogen dominance. Um, another one is seeds, uh, industrial oils like sunflower, safflower. You never want to have canola oil or vegetable oil. Don't have anything called vegetable. All those oils are bad and they're most likely GMO, which will totally affect. And they, they have linked that a lot to leaky gut syndrome, autoimmune diseases, of course, fat, right? Because it's the bad oils the bad oils, right? They have more omega-6s than omega-3s in them. So you want to get some good oils, uh, use a good oil, try and stay. I use grapeseed oil every once in a while when I'm cooking. Um, that's one that I use every once in a while, but I don't use a lot of it, right? So I like to use avocado oil, coconut oil, and a good olive oil. Those are the three that I may use now. So estrogen dominant, again, we're talking about a little bit diabetes, metabolic syndrome. Now, metabolic syndrome is when your hormones, cortisol, insulin, and your hormones, other hormones, are out of balance. So your metabolism is screwed up. You can't metabolize certain foods very well, and it, it just tends to go to fat. So what you eat tends to go to fat instead of being used for energy. Right? Instead of being converted to energy, the foods are now converted to fat. And if you have cortisol problems and insulin resistance, that's when you have things like the metabolic syndrome and so many things are just converted right to fat. Okay, let me know how the said something. How come to your comments? Are you guys commenting anymore? Let me know. <laughs> Hi, Margaret. I'm going to check, I will check my, so let's talk a bit about insulin. I'm going to just go to my Facebook page though, see how everybody's doing. You might be able to see. So do you guys have any questions so far? Do you have any questions? Do you have any comments? Let me know what your thoughts are so far. And we're going to talk about insulin next, which, I mean, a lot of people have heard about insulin because of, um, you know, diabetes, right? And this is a big thing, you know, like when we're pregnant, we can tend to go into some sort of diabetes. Well, in midlife too, it can be quite common, say with thyroid problems, right? Um, and remember that hormones are like dominoes. When one's out, it can affect the other. So when one's out of balance, it can affect the other, affect the other, affect the other, affect the other. And you end up like, I call it a hormone loop. God, that dog is annoying, seriously. Totally fine when I'm downstairs, doing something on my own. Totally fine. As soon as I'm on the computer, he's got to act up. <laughs> Insulin controls whether a calorie makes you fat, <laughs> basically if it's converted to sugar or fuel, right? Too many of the wrong carbs causes insulin resistance. I hate using the word carbs. So we're going to say starchy carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates. We're not talking about broccoli. We're not talking about asparagus. We're not talking about cabbage. We're not talking about peas. We're not talking about uh, cauliflower. We're talking about potatoes, rice, pastas, breads, muffins, any type of flours, any kind of potato starch, tapioca starch. So all the gluten-free baking stuff too, right? Even brown rice, people, even brown rice, even oatmeal, even organic oatmeal, even organic gluten-free oatmeal. Insulin transforms a fat burning hormone into a fat storage hormone if it's out of balance, if it's out of whack. Certain carbohydrates convert to fat instead of fuel. Yes, that's the sad thing. In midlife, your body metabolizes starchy carbohydrates differently. So some simple carbohydrates that will also go more to fat, rice cakes, crackers, 
as we know, cookies and stuff, but rice cakes and crackers. A lot of people want to snack on the 100 calorie snacks, you know, well, these little cookie things or these little wafers that are only 100 calories, they sell in little bags and all that. And they're fat free. Those are loaded with sugar and they have no fiber and no fats, which when you have something that's mostly sugar and a simple carbohydrate, it goes right to fat. That's like eating fruit on its own in this phase of life. You have nothing to balance it. You need fats to balance it. You need proteins to balance it. You need fiber, right? Otherwise, that simple thing, how do cal I don't care how many calories it is, it's going to go to fat, right? A simple bag of those 100 calorie snacks compared to eating one whole avocado, <laughs> probably wouldn't, but... You know, when avocado is so many more calories and grams of fat, but it's not going to be converted right to fat, like those simple snacks. Well, this is a this is a really big um, confusion for a lot of people. Those granola bars or those um, little energy bars or those healthier snack bars. Oh my God, you guys! Most of those have so much sugar in them, or so much rice crisps or um, simple things that they say are a healthier option, but they're not, they're actually way worse for you. So you gotta really watch those. Um, leptin resistance is something else we're not gonna talk about right now because it's a little bit too involved, but I go into that in a couple of programs. <clears throat> and when you are eating, when you have insulin problems and when you are eating certain foods, so that'd be like someone who's let's say vegan in midlife. You wanna be vegan in midlife, tricky. It's pretty tricky because vegans tend to eat a lot of starchier carbohydrates. And the problem with that is those are the things that are now more converted into a simple, into a sugar, right? So lots of these things that like beans and lentils and all those things, which are so great. I love them and Indian food, right? With all the dairy and all that. But oh my goodness, those are foods that'll keep you, keep your weight up, keep your weight way up. I don't care how much fiber they have in them, right? Like, it's not that they're bad for you. Remember, I still have some lentils. I still have some beans. It's not, it's not like you can't have them. But if you're not eating enough of the foods that you need to eat for this phase of life, yeah, you're going to end up in that, continuing with that belly fat problem. Insulin and estrogen block metabolism. Insulin resistance, your cells can't absorb the extra blood glucose your body keeps generating from the food you eat. Your liver converts the glucose into fat. Estrogen dominance, bloating, swelling, tenderness, and breasts, fibrocystic, oh, fibroids. If someone is diagnosed with fibroids too, um, right away start Googling foods that, cause, foods that are high in estrogen. Um, Estrogen foods to eat if I'm estrogen, foods not to eat if I'm estrogen dominant, all of that, like start researching all the health stuff or give me a call <laughs> because you need to change what you are eating seriously. If you have fibroids, you know, you just want to get rid of those. You want to shrink them. You want to don't want to continue in that state because that'll affect other aspects of your health. Okay. Um, low sex drive. Yeah, that's, that is also a lot to do with testosterone, but you got to think if you have three hormones and one's really, really high and the other are low, like testosterone is going to be low then. So one of the symptoms will be low sex drive, right? Um, irregular periods, that's very normal in midlife, very normal. Uh, and that's just because of what's happening and they'll eventually go away. <clears throat> so here's what you can do. <laughs> you don't have to, Never eat meat, sugar, and alcohol again, right? It's kind of about, okay, I'm going to greatly decrease these and caffeine if you have too much, right? Um, I'm going to greatly decrease these things. I'm going to work on greatly decreasing some of these things. And like I said, on Friday, we'll talk more about the foods. Hormone levels become elevated. Your metabolism gets slower and slower and you get fatter and fatter. Um, hormone resistance, biological feedback loop. That's what I talk about, the loop. You get in this hormonal loop that you can't get out of and you don't know how to get out of it because you're only working on one thing. Oh, I'm trying to eat right or I'm taking this hormone or I'm taking this supplement. Why can't I lose weight? Oh my God, because you're only working on one thing, right? Body, mind, soul. You need to work on all of it. 
right? And insulin, more insulin can be, there we go, from feeling overstressed. So you will find out on Sunday how stress affects every single thing in your body. Cortisol, this is the stress hormone. Stress hormone, cortisol. Ah, you'll find out about this. So I'm just going to stop sharing this video for a minute to check in on you guys. If I can get to the page, it's hard to find where, how to, oh, there we go. Stop sharing. There we go. Okay. I covered a lot. Do you guys have any questions? Um, I'm just going to stop it right now for questions because before we move on, because this is a lot, right? This is a lot of information thrown at you. And if you're watching the replay, feel free to post comments, post questions. Let me know how, what you're thinking of this. And remember, you do not have to memorize this hormone stuff at all. And it seems complicated. And it seems, um, there we go. Now I can see good carbs, broccoli, cauliflower. What are healthy foods, Mona? Healthy foods. That's how easy the food is, you guys. You guys overcomplicate it. Snacks, eat food, eat food, stop trying to find a snack. Try to eat food, celery and hummus, um, carrots and hummus, um, eat half a salad for a snack, um, things like that, right? Have a boiled egg, have almonds and some apple. Don't have the apple on its own. You wanna have it with the fat and fiber. Right, so celery and um, celery and apple, right? Sliced apple, things like that. So people, our problem is that people think snacks have to be junky food. Snacks don't have to be junky food. Snacks should be actually real food. Yeah, snacks should be real, real food, right? But I'm not opposed to like guacamole on a rice cake. So if you have rice cakes or crackers, you must put something on them. Don't eat them on their own. So what I would do is I'd take like a, ri a thin rice cake that you don't want flavor on the rice cakes. Okay? Thin rice cake, avocado, and maybe cucumber on them. Or a thin rice cake with hummus and sprouts or, or cucumber on it. Something like that. That's a really good snack. So you can't eat it like that. Definitely. And I know hummus are like, people are saying, well, isn't hummus a uh, starchy carb because of the chickpeas? Yes, but you don't want to eat a lot of it. So it's not going to be your main meal, right? You can add chickpeas to your salad. You can add have some hummus on the side, but it's not your main meal. It is just a little bit. I'm having a snack. You can also, uh, there's cashew-based cream cheeses that you can buy and you can make yourself. Intermittent fasting. Yes, but you must be eating the right foods, Desiree. If you're still eating the wrong foods, intermittent fasting will work a little bit, but then you're not eating the right foods. If you're not, if you're eating the wrong foods, still too many of the wrong foods or not enough of the right foods, your body still won't release the weight. But intermittent fasting is great. Anything healthy is good, right? Um, except of course, we're talking like cooked oatmeal and bananas, which is healthy. But you got to think that things that are converted to fat starchy carbohydrates that are cooked, converted to fat, let's say in this phase, and fruit on its own. And the small 100 calorie snacks on their own, rice cakes on their own. So when there's no balance of, so let's say if you have a smoothie, you have fruit, you have, let's say chia gel with it, you have greens, fresh greens in it, you have maybe a protein powder, you have some super powders, you have, so you have things that have good oils in it, good proteins, carbohydrate, like good carbohydrates. And um, like chia gel is a protein plus a good essential fat. So things like that. It's about the balance. You don't want to have just a simple food. Like pasta, just a plate of pasta is like one of the worst things you could eat. Really bad. Four, I mean, you're not eating anything healthy. You're actually decreasing your health because it's going to cause inflammation in your body and it's going to cause brain fog and a whole bunch of problems. Um, so please don't eat pasta in this phase of life. There are certain kinds of pasta though, like uh, they now have the Edinami pastas. Um, 
but that's the whole thing. When you're in my programs, you learn all those types of, you learn about the right foods and it's so much easier because you have things you love to eat. You have the recipes you love and you get on the right track and you start noticing differences in your body really fast. But then the first two weeks, guys, because you're finally on the right track, you're knowing what to eat, you're knowing how to combine it, you're doing all of the things right and your body adjusts very fast. That's the great thing. Uh, being on the right track, then yeah, once you're on the right track, your body starts to adjust pretty fast. It's really amazing. As long as, of course, as you're willing to um, work on your stress reduction too. <laughs> Take time for you. Perfect. Okay, let me just see if I see any more questions. Cortisol, the stress hormone, fat storage hormone. Mm -hmm. High cortisol and unstable blood sugar level. Visceral fat has four times the cortisol receptors. And that's the fat that sits on top of your belly, right? It's like that, that fat that's so hard to get, a, get rid of. Yeah, um, a fat. So you keep taking on more fat. Oh, ridiculous. Chronic stress, sugar cravings, increased fat storage, stress-induced obesity. Uh, rapid weight gain, high blood pressure, osteoporosis, skin bruises, purple stretch marks, muscle weakness, mood swings, anxiety, depression, irritability, increased thirst, frequent urination. That's what happens when your cortisol is high because your body, you are in like a fight or flight. You are kept keeping yourself in survival mode, um, high stress. Even if a woman, let's say, says, well, I'm not doing anything different in my life in my 40s, 30s, whatever. I was really busy and really stressed and everything was fine. Yes, but when you get to this phase of life, your body is now under huge amounts of stress because of the changes. So your regular life is like multiplied by five, right? It's like, I used to be able to do all these things. Why can't I now? It's just the way it is while you're going through this this crazy phase of carrying menopause, right? But it's also because you need to stop doing everything. You need to like slow down. You need to say no more. You need to do the basics. You need to take better care of yourself, right? It's like, if you work full time, then you work full time. Then you need to have time on your own to rest, relax, recover, eat healthy foods, shop for healthy foods, right? Take the right supplements, take some great super powders, feed and fuel your body, the right foods. When you do all of that, your body will just like, whoo, and do stress reduction, you know? Ah, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, this feels so good, right? So your body needs <clears throat> extra nutrition, <clears throat> a lot of extra nutrition during the space. It's like pregnancy. You know, when you go in pregnancy, you take extra pregnancy vitamins, you really make sure you, you're eating well, you make sure you get rest. We need that now. And people don't realize that, right? And especially if you are having problems sleeping, then it's like, oh my God, how am I supposed to get more sleep when I'm having problems sleeping? <laughs> now, just notice that when you have high insulin and high cortisol, your melatonin is lower. So therefore you have problems sleeping, right? So problem sleeping, that's the thing. You cannot sleep until you handle and decrease the cortisol levels better. And this does, we're going to, you're going to find out Sunday, some things to do that are easy and you can do during the day. They don't take hours. It's not about taking major long yoga classes. It's not about meditating for one hour. No, there's simple things you can do throughout the day that'll greatly reduce the stress response as well as the way you think the way you react, the way you, you know, manage yourself. And in my programs, we deal with all of that because we deal with the mindset. So you get help with that, right? And it changes everything, it really does. So the thyroid hormone, not gonna talk a lot about it, but high insulin, high cortisol can cause problems with the thyroid hormone. And then this is a big one, right? And then also bad grains that are genetically modified, too many grains, grains that are sprayed with junk. So people say, well, there's no one really has gluten intolerance. It's probably because of what's sprayed on 
the actual wheat, right? Um, so things like that, because you got to remember our food supply is just filled with junk now. Terrible, terrible stuff. That's why I only shop basically at farmer's markets as much as I can for anything fresh, right? Link between grains and hormone levels of leptin, thyroid, and insulin. Dietary stress from certain foods, such as grains, is a major cause of weight loss resistance. Now, I don't want you to fear grains. It's okay if you go out and have rice every once in a while. It's okay if you have a little bit of wild rice or brown rice with your meal. It's okay. Things like that, right? Like, don't fear them. Quinoa and buckwheat are absolutely fantastic. Buckwheat's gluten-free. Are fantastic for you. Highly recommend you get more quinoa and then look at buckwheat. Absolutely. Um, minimal bits of millet. I don't really like millet, but anyways. There's all these ancient grains now that you can try, but remember, make sure they're organic. Make sure you don't have huge amounts. You want to have a little bit of the starches, right? More of the healthy greens and vegetables, okay? The growth hormone is in dairy. So again, right, how much dairy you're consuming. It's great that we love cheese. It's great, all that stuff, but it's an acidic. So it causes inflammation in the body, causes mucus in the body, um, inflammation within the body. Yeah, so you gotta kind of watch that stuff, right? Okay, and we're gonna talk about toxins. So I'll check out my group again. So it's a lot. It can feel like, what the hell can we eat and drink? But I can tell you guys so many things, so many wonderful, wonderful things. And I think a lot of it is that people don't have the recipes. They're like, and my recipes are super easy. I am keep it simple. No, I love keeping it simple, but tasty, simple and delicious is my thing. And I'm, like I said, I helped do the recipes for a restaurant. I am, that's my specialty. I love, love, love making up new recipes. Um, and once you have good foods that are simple and easy, they taste delicious. You don't tend to crave things. They balance your blood sugar levels. They get rid of the cravings. You have way more energy. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm just checking if there's any more comments. Make sure you ask any questions because um, I'm checking my Facebook group every once in a while here. We're going to talk about toxins. We're almost finished, guys. <laughs> so, I know this is long. We're almost finished. So here we go. Back to my slides. Oh, sorry about that. Here it is. Move things around. I know. Sorry. Sorry. There we go. Back on it. Toxins. This is one of the big hormone disruptors. And I want you guys to realize how serious this is. Plastics, junk food, packaged food, cleaning products, makeup, skincare, hair care, body lotions. All contain tons of toxins. When your body, so when, when we bring in toxins and environment, you know what we breathe and what's sprayed in the air and stuff and and anything we put on our vegetables or on our grasses outside, so many things, right? When our body, when we breathe in, ingest in, put the stuff on our skin, so your skin's your largest organ, anything you put on your skin is absorbed into your bloodstream. When our body receives these toxins, we are supposed to process them and eliminate them. But nowadays we receive way too many, too fast, consistently all the time. Our digestive system is sluggish and not really healthy. We don't have very good gut bacteria because of our guts are not that healthy anymore. Therefore, our body can't properly do it. Maybe sluggish liver going on, things like that, right? So we don't eliminate, get rid of the toxins like we used to because also we have way too many coming in. So your body does something really special. To protect you, your body gathers all the toxins and puts them in like a garbage dump to protect your organs. Fat, fat is the garbage dump of your body. Fat will uh, encapsulates all the toxins. Your body needs fat to hold the toxins. So if you see somebody who's really obese and they have like discoloration in their skin, they may have skin rashes, they have really puffy ankles, 
really puffy legs, um, all of that, a lot of bad spots all over. They're probably full of toxins. They cannot even lose weight if they tried. They have insulin resistance, cortisol problems, and toxins in their body. Very, very unhealthy. They probably can't walk properly. They're probably on a lot of different drugs. So prescription drugs also cause toxins within your body, right? So all of these things now that so many people are taking in and on their body are causing an overly toxic body. So their body needs the fat to hold these toxins and keep, keep it safe. But the thing is, is that when there's such an overload of toxins, the toxins kind of begin to leak out into the system of our body and cause illness and disease, of course, right? And other problems within our body, right? So there's so much of that going on too. So I really want you to like be more cautious now, right? Read labels of everything. Um, use natural skincare products. Try to do as best as you can for natural makeups. You can make your own skin creams. You can make your own house cleaning products. They are super easy to do. Just Google it there. Go to Pinterest. Oh my God, there's like so many fantastic recipes. Watch the packaged foods you buy, packaged salad dressings. What you're going to talk about this on Friday. Salad dressings, sauces, um, spice mixes, flavorings, gravies, vegan, vegan food is one of the most loaded food full of preservatives and junk incredible don't fall for the fake vegan stuff don't fall for the vegan don't fall for that stuff read all labels i just had tempeh today i eat tempeh so it's like but you know i it's pretty natural so just really be careful um what you are buying and read all labels right simple salad dressings you can make your own super fast and super easy right making your own green smoothies or juices making your own whole foods, stop worrying about so much packaged stuff, right? We really need to get back to, oh my God, I'm a person, I'm a person. My body, if my body's not healthy, I cannot live my life in the way I wanna live my life. I'm not gonna feel good. I'm not gonna sleep well. Therefore, I'm not gonna be productive at work. What if I end up really sick and I have to take off work or I have to leave work or I have to quit my work, right? Everybody's worried about what I gotta work. I gotta work to make money. If you are not healthy, you will not be able to work, right? So we got to think about health first. Always, always, always. There we go. These are just a few things here. I'll just let you read that a little bit. So you can see how it's all linked together, right? Like it's just linked upon linked. Oh my God, one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. That's why when you want to release the belly fat, you got to think about the, your whole body, holistic health, 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 health <laughs> on all areas. What can you do? There's supplement formulations that help with the symptoms, which are kind of about helping your nourish your glands and produce the hormones, feed them the right herbs, the right vitamins, the right minerals that they need so that those glands can be strong and work well to produce hormones, right? Um, you can see a naturopath, Chinese doctor, herbalist. I saw them all in perimenopause. Oh my God. Look into bioidentical hormones that I talked about, eating the right foods. We're going to talk about those on Friday. And no more gluten, dairy, fast food, junk food, sugar, and greatly decrease al alcohol. So again, what I mean, no more, it's like, greatly decrease these things especially for a while and if you want to lose the fat fast not fast whatever you know if you really are serious then it's a great idea to you know get rid of them for a period of time three weeks one month uh get moving doing the right kind of exercise though but you also need to make sure you're not tired and exhausted because exercising when you're tired and exhausted is just going to cause more weight gain um stop the excuses look at your schedule and make the time you don't even have to make the time you have time we all have the same amount of hours in the day you need to say no to some things now you need to maybe talk to your family listen i'm not healthy right now i'm not feeling good i need time for me i need time to prepare healthy foods i need your help in this way and be serious about it you are important you're worthy. You got to do this for you. This is your health. You cannot be good for anybody else if you're not taking care of yourself, right? 
um, let go of things that are not serving you anymore. That's when you're like, I got to be serious. If you are, you know, like all of a sudden taking classes or doing or, or volunteering a lot and you're in this space and you're like, oh my God, I'm so exhausted. It's great that you're volunteering, but maybe you need to say no for like three months or six months and just say, you know what, when I feel better, I will go back to doing that. Okay. Don't feel bad about that. Whoopsie. You come first. You come first. You come first. You come first. You are first in your life. You, number one, number one, number one. In the way that you focus, I'm, I'm making sure I'm eating the right foods. I'm making sure I'm getting a good amount of right, uh, rest. I'm making sure I'm taking good supplements and feeding fuel in my body. While I'm still taking care of my kids, if you have young kids, I'm taking care of my mom. That's what I mean. It doesn't mean you drop your family, you drop your kids, you drop it. It means you, you are responsible for your health. So you make sure that all these things are happening for you. Get the help you need. Talk to your family, talk to whatever, right? Because you cannot continually to support other people more than you support yourself. You will crash. <laughs> you will crash, right? I have a special for you guys. If um, I have a one-on-one -on -one call with me for $111 right now, that's $100 off. So if you want to get on a call with me, a video conference call, like video Zoom, um, and we, I completely find out what you've been doing. I send you a questionnaire. questionnaire. I figure out like, okay, we're going to talk together. We're going to set up a plan for you. You're going to get some recipes. You're going to get some videos to support you. You're going to get some handouts with whatever you need most to work with. You're going to get the foods that you need to start with to get back on track, all of those things. And you're going to get the notes from our call. That's what I have right now. I do have a program starting soon, but I also want to just let you know about that, that if you want to get started right now, you want some one-on-one -on -one support, like right now, get on the right track, figure out where you're, where, what you're doing that isn't quite working for you. Um, that's what this one-on-one -on -one call can really, really help you with. It's, you know, sometimes we think I'm doing everything right, Diana, I'm eating the right foods. I swear to God, I'm doing everything right. And then I talk to you and I'm like, oh, uh, no. All you have to do is switch up this, switch up this. You're eating too much of this. You're not eating enough of this. The way you start your morning makes a huge difference to what you're eating. So many women are doing that wrong. And that sets your whole day, right? I'm looking at the questions. Do you guys have any questions? I'm going to go to my Facebook group now because the slides are done. So reach out on me on Messenger if you want that special. It's going to end in a couple of days. The 111 special. Any more questions? Any comments? And I don't want to overwhelm people and think I'll never be able to lose the belly fat. No. Many, many, many women who've worked with me have lost the weight even when they couldn't. It's like for two years, I couldn't lose the weight, you know, all of this and they've lost the weight. So it's a Oh, thank you, Mary. I'm so happy you liked it. Go back and watch it again, guys. <laughs> it's a lot of information, right? Don't be, I'm just, remember, I'm giving you the science stuff. I'm giving you stuff in the background that you don't learn about. Now I hope you have a better understanding of, oh my God, all this stuff is going on inside of me. No wonder I'm feeling like I'm feeling, right? Yes, absolutely, Mary. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Yes. If someone's got type 2 diabetes, take a program of mine. All the food, all the stuff I do is good for uh, balancing your blood sugar levels, um, decreasing inflammation within your body, and, in and boosting your immune system. All of it. And balancing your hormones. The foods are all the same. Increased health, better energy, more youthful, <laughs> decreased inflammation, all of that, it's all the same. And it just helps to balance your hormones too. Because there's certain foods that we need to, um, during this phase of life that you need to, like oatmeal, that you need to stay away from a little bit more, um, like oatmeal cookies and oatmeal granola bars and all those things that some people will tell you to have. So in this phase of life, we just got, and, but you can have yams, you know, the orange yams, 
potatoes that time, those are great for you to have. So you can have yams, right? Yes, because I also deal with super powders and uh, superfoods that when you add them to your diet, you notice a huge difference, a huge difference in how your body functions. Most people are not getting enough minerals. Most people are not getting enough of the good fats. It's not about going low fat. It is not all about cal calorie restriction at all. We don't count calories. We don't measure food. There's no points. I, t I show you how to deal with food in such a different way that you can continue for the rest of your life. It's super great. Yeah. No, post perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. I work with women in all phases, all phases. This is the perfect time for you to start married because if you don't start now, it will get way worse for you. If you don't get on the right track, your symptoms will continue. It's just going to be. See, I started in perimenopause and I can I balance my body better in perimenopause. When I ended up in menopause, I had no weight problem. My anxiety was gone. You know, I was able to balance my body so much faster. Yeah. So the best time to start is now. Doesn't matter what phase you're in. Please don't wait, people, because it's not, yeah, it doesn't get better. Unfortunately, we're just at that phase of our life. But you can feel amazing at this phase. You can, you can do so many things, right? Get on the right track for health. And that's really what it's all about. Okay, let's see. As the first step gets up A, we work at food and stress reduction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and I'm gonna have, so I have that one-on-one -on -one session with me, which is really, really good. Like $111, you guys, you will, everybody should be doing it. <laughs> but, um, the program that I will have after this is called Where to Start, and it has to do with the food and, and the stress reduction, and it's an introductory. So for people who are like, oh, I don't want to invest a lot of money. I want to just kind of learn and start with Diana in some way. So that is coming up. It's going to be completely doable and uh, a great way to get the, in the information about where to start. That's going to be coming, but there's no one-on-one -on -one with me during that program. So if you want um, the one-on-one -on -one to start, that would be a really good thing to do. And then when the program comes out, you can take that. And that is such a great way to have the information like you have it. And it is Facebook group. So there's, it's a special Facebook group. And we, um, you know, I'm with you every day for three weeks and you're showing your food and I'm helping you adjust. And I have live training videos during the week and I'm there to help you every day in the Facebook group. So there is that in that program, there's just no one-on-one. So if you want a one-on-one, uh, the one-on-one special right now is great. Or, and the new group is coming out, I'm gonna be getting more information about that. And if you guys have any friends that may be interested in this information, invite them to the Facebook group, okay? Cause these videos are so informative, like you can see. And I really want women to learn more about this because, oh, I just hear way too many women going to different types of drugs or synthetic hormones, hoping they're going to get the help they want. But they only end up feeling worse. And that really is sad. There's no need for that, right? Okay, so much love to you guys. Thank you so much for being here. It's been wonderful. Um, good for you for being interested in taking better care of your health. Bravo.